So why was Bishop McGuire so beloved? Terry Hegarty continues our special coverage today by taking a look back at the life of Bishop McGuire. Through numerous old videos and scores of historic photos, we get a glimpse of the impact that our beloved fifth bishop had on those in Boston, here in the Diocese of Springfield, and beyond. It is with a sense of deep sorrow and loss, but with great faith in the resurrection of Christ, that I announce the death of Bishop Joseph F. McGuire around 6 p.m. this Sunday evening. With that press conference announcement on November 23rd, the Western Massachusetts community learned of the death of Springfield's longtime Bishop Emeritus, Joseph F. McGuire. By nearly all accounts, the ordinary of Springfield was an extraordinary man, just as well-versed in talking hockey or baseball with someone as he was speaking of church teaching. He especially loved spending time with children. Bishop McGuire was in the 70th year of his priesthood and his 42nd year as a bishop. He was, according to all who knew him well, a caring, faithful, genuine man for all of his 95 years. Despite having officially retired more than two decades ago, he had continued to be one of the most popular and beloved public figures in Western Massachusetts. He was ordained a priest for the Archdiocese of Boston in 1945, became an auxiliary bishop there in 1972, and was named coadjutor bishop of Springfield in 1976, working closely with Bishop Christopher J. Weldon. On October 15, 1977, his installation as the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Springfield was held in the Springfield Civic Center to accommodate the large crowd. Bishop Weldon was known as the Great Builder because he implemented the construction of so many churches and other facilities during his tenure. Father Bill Pomerlo, who was ordained by Bishop McGuire in 1979, says that Bishop McGuire's legacy picked up on Bishop Weldon's. Well, Bishop Weldon was the building bishop. He, he renovated uh, all the institutions of the diocese, all the hospitals, the, the social service institutions, and established many parishes which set the physical foundation of the diocese. Then in his latter years, he was a little older and he got sick himself. Bishop McGuire took over and it was the ministries. He built on the buildings and invested in the people. That's why he was known as the people's bishop. He had the ability to remember a person's name after meeting them only once. Bishop McGuire recognized the importance of reaching out to young people and always welcomed them with great gladness. He took a long time in processions, slowly making his way down church aisles, stopping to greet people all along the way. Outside of church, he couldn't resist throwing a baseball or football or swinging a bat or golf club when the opportunity arose. Upon his retirement in 1992, officials from the Archdiocese of Boston reached out to Bishop McGuire, inviting him to reside back in Boston. But Bishop McGuire felt so much at home in the Diocese of Springfield, he decided to stay right here on Elliott Street, in a modest apartment above the Chancery offices. This would remain his home for the last 35 years of his life. During his episcopacy, he revamped the former Catholic Charities Drive into the Catholic Stewardship Appeal, established the Catholic Communications Office, Pastoral Ministry, and Youth Ministry Offices, all the while prompting the involvement of more women religious to head diocesan departments. Bishop McGuire instituted the permanent diaconate in the diocese. Under his tenure, the Apostolate for Black Catholics was formed, and plans to better serve the Hispanic population were unveiled. Bishop McGuire was recognized for his leadership in the broader community as well. He served as longtime chaplain to the Western Massachusetts Chiefs of Police. He was known as an approachable, humble man, a people person in the truest sense of the term. Bishop McGuire, I suppose, in a sense, was kind of the old-fashioned Irish spirituality. Nothing very fancy. He never wrote any great books of theology. He just wanted simple, everyday, homespun almost spirituality. That homespun manner was originally fostered 90 miles east of Springfield. Born in the Mission Hill section of Roxbury in Boston on September 4, 1919, he was the beloved son of the late Joseph T. McGuire and Grace Wenger McGuire, both of Boston. 
His sister, Grace Waystack, was his greatest friend and confidant. At her home on Cape Cod, he was Uncle Joe, enjoying his nephews and nieces, grandnephews and grandnieces immensely. Grace died in late 2012. In what was his final public homily, Bishop McGuire spoke at both her funeral on Cape Cod and at a memorial mass at St. Michael's Cathedral. Diocesan staff and friends said that her passing affected him deeply. He was raised in Boston and graduated from St. Columkill Elementary and High Schools in Brighton, Mass. He went on to attend Boston College where he was a varsity baseball and hockey player. In 1939, the hockey team went on to a 13-1 record and took the Eastern Championship. In 1984, he was inducted into the Boston College Varsity Club Athletic Hall of Fame. His love of sports never waned. In the Diocese of Springfield, he was a fixture at Catholic high school games and rarely missed an Elms College athletic event, cheering enthusiastically. The McGuire Center at Elms College was dedicated and named in his honor. Following his 1941 graduation from Boston College, the future bishop enlisted in the Marine Corps, but was not called to active duty. He then went to St. John's Seminary in Brighton, and on June 29, 1945, he was ordained by Cardinal Richard Cushing, Archbishop of Boston. Known as Father Joe, he served in several parishes in the Archdiocese. From 1956 until 1959, he served in the Massachusetts Army National Guard, with the rank of captain and Catholic chaplain. In 1962, he became Master of Ceremonies for Cardinal Cushing, and in February 1972, he was ordained an Auxiliary Bishop of Boston. Four years later, in 1976, he was named Coadjutor Bishop of Springfield to work in transition with Bishop Weldon, whose chronic heart issues had begun to take their toll. In 1985, Bishop McGuire authored his most well-known piece of writing, Enduring Love, an Advent Reflection, which focused on the need to better prepare for Christmas. His pastoral letter on Christmas, I think, was probably the closest thing he had to a, a written masterpiece. He talked about the commercialization of Christmas. I always remember he said, I don't want to be an ecclesiastical Scrooge, but he said, uh, how do we celebrate the birth of Christ? And maybe it's time to, to calm down all the Christmas parties. It kind of put a, brought Advent back, at least to the diocesan offices and to the parishes. Like nearly all bishops, he was confronted with the clergy abuse crisis. Bishop McDonald referenced this at Bishop McGuire's funeral. He anguished over the pain those young people had suffered, pain they carried into adulthood pain many carry still. His apologies were profound, moving from the heart. He asked for their forgiveness, regretting that he was not more aware at the time of all that was happening. Having been informed of some heart problems, Bishop McGuire in the early 1990s wrote to the Vatican asking to retire. Just a few months after his February 1992 retirement, he was hospitalized with a heart attack. But Bishop McGuire was quick to rebound and start in earnest his second career as Bishop Emeritus, a career that spanned more than 22 years. I really think he foreshadowed Pope Francis's uh, pastoral approach in the way he wrote and the way he touched people. He certainly touched people and inspired people, inspired people to holiness, and that's what he was known for. In retirement, Bishop McGuire also found more time to root for his favorite sports teams, especially for his beloved Boston College Eagles. A Boston native who had family and many close friends in eastern Massachusetts, Bishop McGuire decided to remain in western Massachusetts. He even chose to make his final resting place in Springfield, here at St. Michael the Archangel Mausoleum, where people of the diocese could come and pray for him. In the words the church so often uses, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. For Real to Real, this is Terry Hegarty. It's easy to see why Bishop McGuire made such an impression on people wherever he served. 
and we are confident that his legacy will continue through all those he mentored and guided during his 95 years.